Yo. Hi my beautiful bubbles, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a GFX once again. This is because my earlier tutorial on how to make a GFX was kind of a flop. I realized I did not say everything I needed to say in the video and Roblox Studio and Blender has kind of updated so this will be a much easier version now that I've got feedback from everyone. Anyways, to make this simple, the two apps you need is Blender and Roblox Studio. Both of these apps are free and will be linked in the description. These apps are virus free to answer many of you guys' questions and they work fine. There shouldn't be a site saying you have to purchase it or you have to donate to purchase it. If it is saying that, let me know and I'll send you the link. Anyways, so what you want to start out with is opening Roblox Studio. Then it will ask you to log in here and you log into your Roblox account. Next, open up a base plate. So this part is a bit confusing, but I'm sure you guys will understand it. So here under plugins, press manage plugins, then press find plugins. After that, it will bring you to this page where you can see all these plugins that you can download for free. What you want to download is load character. I already have it installed, but just press install. And then as soon as it says it's installed, click out of this manage plugin site. Okay, so next up here, it should say load character and it will bring up this. What you wanna do is type in the username of the player that you want to make a GFX of. So I'm just gonna do myself. Next, make sure you press spawn at origin. This is key. So many people missed this part in my last tutorial. It is key to press spawn at origin or else it will be super difficult. So make sure you press that. And next, you can press spawn R15. So as you can see, the character is spawned up in the sky, which is kind of confusing. Um, so what we want to do is we want to bring it down to the bottom, to the base plate. So we're going to go to model, move, and then drag this green arrow down until it hits the floor. So if you want to add anything to your GFX, you can just go over here to toolbox and search up what you want to add. So I'm just going to look up flower. And then here are a whole bunch of flowers. I'm not going to add anything, but this is just to educate you guys because a lot of people were wondering, well, how do you add like items to it? Okay, so next, highlight your Roblox character and right click and then press export selection. Then name it whatever you want to name it. I'm just going to name it me. Make sure to save it to an actual folder on your computer. I'm pretty sure if you save it to like desktop on Windows, the character will turn orange or pink, which you do not want happening. So make sure to save it to an like actual folder or like downloads in my case. I'm going to just save it to PFPs. Then you can press save. Next, what you want to do is open up Blender. This is the screen you'll see when you first open it up. Don't worry, just click the screen and it should go away. Then you'll have a random box, press delete X, and then press delete to get rid of that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do just a normal GFX without cycles render. If you'd like to know how to do cycles render, please check out the tutorial on the little I box up above. So what you want to do is go over here to file and press import. Scroll down to import OBJ, then find where you saved it and open it up as an OBJ. So your character will load in this gray color, but don't you worry, we will change the coloring soon. So there are many different ways to do this, but this is perfectly what I do. I press this little plus button on the side here and scroll down to where it says texture solid and ambient occlusion. Click both of those. As you can see, your character is looking normal again. So another little tip to make it look a bit better is to go over here to the world icon and press ambient occlusion, environmental lighting, and indirect lighting. Also, by the way, you can get rid of this. This part is optional, but if you'd like to make an edit of your avatar or edit the background or use Photoshop or pixlr.com to edit it, just go here, press shading, and then under sky, click transparent. And this will change the background to transparent so you can have a transparent background with just your avatar. So this is also optional. It really depends if you have a good processor on your computer and if your computer is a newer version because if your computer is slow, it might not render quickly and you could be waiting forever. So to make your GFX have a higher quality, this is completely optional, you can go here to the resolution and change it to 10,000 times 10,000. 
This is also how to change the width and height of it. So if you change the width to like 1000 times 10,000, it will be a different shape. So you can just try out all that stuff and see what works for you. But preferably, I use 10,000 times 10,000 because it makes it higher quality and I have a fast running computer. Okay, so now that you've listened to me blabber on about all the technical stuff, we're finally going to get into how to change the position of your avatar. So, to move around in Blender, it's kind of like Roblox. What you want to do is press Shift F, and this will allow you to move. To go forward, press W. To go sideways, press D and A. And to go backwards, press S. You can also press Q to go down and E to go up on your keyboard. As soon as you get used to moving around your screen, you can position how you want to right in the middle of your avatar so that you can see it well. So here we are with my avatar and at the moment, everything is selected. So what you want to do is right click the limbs that you want to move. You can also select multiple limbs by pressing shift and then right clicking. So since we spawned R15 in Roblox Studio, we have multiple limbs to move around, which makes it so much easier and multiple possibilities on how to move around your character. What I want to do is bend half of the arm and put it on the hip, so like hand on your hip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these limbs, the hand and part of the arm, and then click down here. This is a part I forgot last time. These are how you move around your arms and your limbs. So this button moves around, moves it around, so you can move it around on scale. Then this one turns it, so you can turn it. And this one scales it, so you can make it bigger, <laughs> or you can make it fatter. So yeah, there's lots of possibilities. So what I wanna do is I want to turn it. So I'm gonna turn it this way and put it on my hip. There we go. So I hope that made sense. Uh, and you can do this with every part of your body if you want. What I wanna do next is change around the head a bit. Um, so I'm gonna select all the parts of my head, my glasses, my face, and my hair. And I'm gonna select this tool. Then I can do the blue line to change where my head is looking. What you can also do to tilt your head is select this green line and tilt it sideways. And then to move it back onto your neck, you can take this key and you can move it back on your head. Then you can move it up a bit so it looks a bit more normal. Another thing which is completely optional is if you don't want your background to be transparent and you want a background in Blender, you can go over here to the world icon and where it says horizon, click this and it will bring you to a color palette. So the more white it is, the lighter, and then the more dark it is, it's the darker. So it kind of makes sense if you guys haven't used a color palette, you can just mess around with this. Uh, and you can choose any color, but I'm going to have my background be transparent. So if you don't want your background to be transparent when you export it, and you just want a background in Blender, then you can just choose any color. Anyways, so as soon as you're done with all that customizing, it is time for us to export your avatar. So this part is pretty easy in my opinion. Just go to view on the side, camera, and it will bring you to your camera. So this is what I was talking about earlier with the resolution. Right now is a square because I have it set at 10,000 times 10,000. But of course, you can change it up. Like if I do 1,000 times 10,000, it will make it really thin. Or if I do 10,000 times 1,000, it will make it thin this way. But preferably, I want to do it as a square and really high resolution. Positioning the camera is just like moving around in Blender. Just press Shift F to move around and then press the keys to move it to your liking. So I'm gonna have it right here, and I know this isn't the best GFX I've ever made, but this is just an example for you guys. Okay, so as soon as you're done positioning it, go over here to where it says render, and press render image. Then it starts to render. So as you guys can see, it's really bright. So if you want to fix how bright it is, you can just press escape if you don't like how your render is. So since I don't like how bright it is, I'm gonna go back over here and unclick environmental lighting because that makes it really bright and I don't particularly like really, really bright GFX. So then you can go back and render it again. Okay, so here is the end product. To export this, you wanna go over here to image 
and press save as image. Then you can select a place to save it and you can name it up here. Press save as image. Anyways guys, so that's it for how to make a GFX. I'm going to quickly edit this in Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, I highly suggest getting it if you're really into editing photos and you really are artistic online. So I highly suggest that, but not everyone can afford Photoshop, which I completely understand. So if you can't get it, I suggest using Pixlr.com. It will be linked in the description. It's an amazing app. It's for free. You can use it on Chrome, Safari, or any web apps that you have. It is basically like Photoshop, so go mess around with that. I might do a tutorial later on how to edit a GFX and how to make it look cool. So, yeah. So, in all, I did not do an amazing job on this GFX. I usually do Cycles Render, which is better in Photoshop because it's a lower resolution, but if you guys do want to check out the tutorial, it will be linked in the description or in the little eye icon up in the corner. Anyways, I really hope this tutorial did help you. I'm so sorry that my last tutorial was kind of a flop and was really confusing. I really hope this one was less confusing and made more sense to way more people. If you have any suggestions or questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below because I am happy to answer them. And if I can't answer them, I will make sure someone else does. Anyways, I love my beautiful bubble so much and I'll see you guys later. Bye! Yo.